Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bonk, and I am back with another round in the long search for the truly worst Warframe, chosen by you, the community. As we enter round 5, only two matchups remain, and after this, the next round will show who the true worst frame is. But who will be those last two frames? Welcome to the worst Warframe tournament, round 5. As we all know what's happening, no explanation will be given this time around. If you're new, go check out the whole series that led to this point through the card that I will put in the top right up there. Once you're caught up, I hope to see you back here. All that being said, let's just jump on in to our first first of the two matchups remaining. First up comes the pugnacious pirate known as Hydroid, battling it out against Callus Caliban. Two frames that have been ruthlessly judged by all up to this point and seen as not so great frames. But out of these two, who I ask, is the worst one? Well, that question was answered by you all, and that answer was the Puddle Man. Hydroid will be moving on into the finals, confirming that at the very least he is the second worst Warframe in the game according to the people. But why? Well, as you all know, we'll look at some comments to hopefully understand why this decision was made. First up is a comment from Roz. He states that Hydroid's kit has no way of dealing with higher end content. All of his abilities deal fixed damage besides the puddle, which takes far too long to actually kill anything with. Caliban, on the other hand, is able to armor strip with his four, allowing for at least some kind of competence in steel path. And I can't say I disagree with this vote or decision. Although, there are many more comments to discuss. Craft26 comes in to slam Hydroid once again. Although admitting that both frame choices here are appearing to be very lackluster, Caliban at least has some decent attributes. He allows for some shield regen with his uh, ascension bros, some damage boosting, and a decent AoE armor strip. Whereas Hydroid has, and I quote, I dunno, water splashes, thrilling. Once again, no complaints from me, seems pretty Pretty true. Violent Sneezes says that he has never played Hydroid, don't blame you homie, but come on, it's Hydroid. His best method of dealing out some damage is turning into a puddle. Unlucky Hydroid. Doesn't seem to be your day, and I can't say I wasn't expecting this seemingly all Hydroid hating comment section from the difference in the votes, but believe it or not, Hydroid does have some supporters trying to prove their points below. Let's look at a few of those. Perplex kind of makes a point saying that although Hydroid is pretty bad, he still sees one from time to time in game, whereas on the other hand, he hasn't really seen a Caliban. I guess this can be a reason, but that's not really the kind of point that's going to convince anyone that is at the moment on the other side of the aisle to change their minds, because it doesn't really offer an actual reason to them, I don't know. 101 Survivalist explains that he is voting Caliban as worse as well. His reasoning in a very shortened sense is that Hydroid allows for loot farming in a loot farming game, and when he's not matched against a better farming frame like Necros or Korra, he does believe that this loot capability allows him to gain a slight edge over a frame like Caliban. I understand where you're coming from, but still, a worse looting ability than all of the other looting frames in my opinion wouldn't quite boost him over a frame that's able to do Steel Path, which also boosts your loot on all frames, including Caliban. So I'm not 100% sure that the slight boost to your loot in a normal mode match where Hydroid will actually not be dead every 2 seconds is better than just a straight loot bonus in endgame steel path on literally any other frame. But like I said, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't tested the difference in loot gain or anything from normal mode Hydroid buff compared to not looting frame in steel path. Like, I just, I don't know. Hydroid is just jank. Laser over Puddle, an El Hombre solo Davy Jones dyslexic cousin any day. And that's where we will leave it. Hydroid moves on right up to the finals, and next, we find out who he will be facing off with. A matchup I've been waiting for since the dawn of this tournament. And that matchup is... 
the Sandman Anaros, and the bubbly bombastic surfer known as Yoreli. Out of these two frames, who I ask will be facing off with Hydroid in the finals to find out who is the worst Warframe. And according to you, that frame is Anaros. And well, once again, we will make the trek to the center of hell itself known as the YouTube comment section. EIV Harmony is our first comment explaining that Aqua with the Augment is the main reason why Yoreli comes out on top here. It allows for easy kills in Steel Path and Anaros is basically just a weapons platform. But even then, without Helminth, and during this tournament we aren't considering Helminth, he is easily outclassed by other weapon platform frames. True, can't argue with that. This guy, uh, no clue how to say that name, states that Sandboy is worse as well. Yoreli takes the win in his opinion because she's actually pretty decent and capable of many things like debuffing CC and a good AoE. He also recommends replacing the board with Pillage to be golden. And although we aren't including Helminth, I'll mention it anyway because I do agree with replacing the board. It is one of the biggest reasons why I hate Yoreli. Terracraft says that Yoreli says, anything you can do, I can do better. And then you hear some sad Anaros noises. Water washes away to sand. Damn unlucky sand bro. CBSR says the reason why they're voting Anaros is because Yoreli is so cool. Then you read on and realize the horror that is the human race and slowly go into a deep depression. Holy shit, please, no, please, God, oh no. <laughs> Someone help me, don't read this, children. You'll never unsee what you've seen. This is horrible. Oh no, please. How can anyone even think of this stuff, let alone write it down? Skip ahead, save me from this comment, please. I just keep reading it, it gets worse. <laughs> okay, back to the not horrible, terrible, pure evil itself comments. We have one from Keen. He states that Anaros is baby's first tank frame that is pretty cheap to make, and although Yoreli has the board, which isn't really great in normal missions, he is fully capable of soloing Steel Path, which puts her squarely on top of Anaros in this bout. Draco Phoenix says, Anaros does nothing, and Yoreli at least does something. Um, yeah, I guess, sure, I mean, that's kind of true, maybe? I don't know, man. And the ending of the match of Bubble Girl versus the Sky Father is here, with Anaros moving on to the finals to face off with Hydroid. Some of you predicted this matchup correctly all the way back when we began in the first round, but now, and by that I mean a day after this video's release, it will be time to choose out of these two who is in fact the worst Warframe in the entire game. So be prepared and look out for voting over on the community tab. If you enjoyed, a like would be appreciated and possibly a sub, why not? Do it, do it, do it. I will also post a link to my Discord server, Aviator Legion, down below. All are welcome, come on over. That being said, thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you are excited for the final round. Play Zaku 24-7 or the next frame that gets released will be worse than Hydroid Nanaros. And good night.